sometimes it hurts when you say my name, but thinking of hers, I don't want to know, don't want you to go and leave me behind, no, I don't want to see if it isn't me, who's on your mind? What's up guys, it's BT here, and this is the review of the Model O Minus from Glorious, a highly anticipated follow-up from the Model O. So if you're like me and you were in the camp where the Model O was a little bit too big for you, but you just love the feel of it, you love the weight, you love the build quality, but it just couldn't work for you. I know a lot of people out there that I've talked to have switched off of it because of that. This mouse is made for you this mouse is going to be right up your alley so today we're going to go over what's changed with the model o minus not just the size and weight but i actually think they made some structural changes to this mouse as well so starting off with the amazing price this is the most competitively priced mouse on the market at 50 dollars for the matte version and 60 dollars for the glossy and it also comes in the black and the white still and if you have sweaty hands go with the matte if you have dry hands or you live in dry weather go with the glossy version. So on the old Model O's, they were about 68 and 69 grams. When I weighed these, the matte version came in at 57 grams and the glossy version came in at 58. So actually lower than what they were quoting, which is nice to see. So the most noticeable change to me from the Model O was not only the hump in the middle, it's not as pronounced, so it's not gonna fill out your hand as much. It's not gonna feel as big. And then they made it a lot shorter, so it's eight millimeters shorter. So for you fingertip grip users out there, which I just recently switched over and I'm arm aiming as well. It's a dream because that hump really stays out of your way and it just lets your fingers do the work. Now, I would not recommend this for a palm grip user unless you have really, really small hands. I'm talking about 17 by seven centimeters or lower because it's a very slender mouse now. They took off about a millimeter in the middle. And then, like I said, the hump in the middle isn't really pronounced enough for it to be a palm grip mouse for like a medium to large handed user. So if you guys were wondering whether you should go down to the Model O minus, that is how you know. So if you have large hands, definitely stay with the Model O, the original one. If you have medium to smaller hands, or if you like fingertip grip or claw grip, I would definitely move down to the Model O minus. The shape of the Model O minus is actually very similar to the FK2 from Zowie. It's a little bit shorter though, which was surprising to me. I thought they would make Make it almost similar to that but i actually like that they gave us a little bit more room so that we have more room to work with our mouse within our fingers and in our palm so it's going to be most noticeable when you're like pulling back let's say you want to flick down on somebody's head you get that extra room here where that four millimeters really makes a difference and that's something that i really really had trouble with the model o with while on the topic of size, it's actually a little bit longer than the Ultralight 2, but not by much. But it also feels a little bit slimmer in the waist, which is nice if you wanna grab onto it and kinda use that pinky and that thumb to really get a really good grip on your mouse. And then it also has a less of a hump than on the MM710 from Cooler Master, and it has less of a hump than on the Ultralight 2 as well. So I would say those kind of lend themselves more to claw grip and this one's more towards the fingertip grip side. Now structurally, they've changed something, I think, because now when I press on the side, there's no button actuation here. There's none. And before on the Model O, there was some. So it's really cool. I think they listened to some feedback and really reinforced this mouse so that it won't have those issues. Also with the ascending cord, it does come wrapped in the box the same way that the first one does. Uh, it does have that little kink in the beginning, but all I did was kind of roll it out with my index finger and my thumb and it was perfect. It's been great since I got the mouse. When compared to like a paracord, it actually feels a lot more fluid this time. I don't know if that's just a placebo or if it's in my head, but it feels really, really fluid this time. Even when compared to like an Ultralight 2, that cord on there, it's a lot better than that one. As you see here, the Ultralight 2 kind of moves before the Model O minus. The one thing I will say about the ascending cord is that since it has such a loose weave and it's really, really big, it's kind of hard to put into a mouse bungee. Now, moving on to the buns, everybody's favorite topic. So, so let's do the mouse one and two. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Now, there is a little bit of pre-travel still on the mouse one and two, but it's not something that's horrible. It's not going to be as good as like a G305, but it's pretty good. So another change for me that was really, really noticeable was the side buttons. Let me do a sound test of the side buttons. There's a little bit less pre-travel this time, and they sound amazing. Nice, very, very nice. Now, let's do the scroll wheel. This thing is buttery smooth. It hasn't changed. It's pretty much the sim it's pretty much the same as the original. Amazing, amazing scroll wheel. Now the DPI button. It's a little hard to press, and I actually like that because it allows you to not accidentally hit this during game and cause you to like spin in every which direction, so that's nice. On the bottom, they've kept the same DPI indication there with all the different colors, which I love. So yeah, as I mentioned before with the grip, I kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, but this is gonna be great for fingertip grip and claw grip users, hands down. You guys are gonna love this mouse. If the other one was a little bit too big for you, you're gonna love the Model O minus. So speaking on grip a little bit more, what I've been rocking lately is the fingertip grip arm aim with low sensitivity. And this has given me full dexterity over the mouse. Like I get the low sensitivity, I get the benefits of that. And then I also get the dexterity of my fingers to really fine tune the, and adjust to people's heads and things like that. If you're claw grip, this mouse works great as well. I tested it doing some claw grip. Uh, your fingers have more than enough room. I'd say if you're claw grip, you can go up to maybe like a 20 to 21 centimeters long in like for your fingers and you'll be just fine. Now the sensor is rocking a 3360 sensor and it works perfectly. It goes up to 12K DPI and you can adjust this in the software as well. Speaking of the software, you can change the lighting, the RGB effects. Uh, they have that same classic glorious look to this mouse with the RGB on the sides and on the scroll wheel. And then the glorious mode just looks amazing reflecting off that white. White is my favorite color. This white glossy version looks sick. Also in the settings, you'll have the pulling rate, you'll have the lift off distance, which you can change as well. I think it starts at two millimeters. They also have a debouncing mode. Now this is a cool find that I found this week. When I had it set to the default, the 10 milliseconds, the variance of my click latency was going all over the place. And I thought it was just a fluke, but then I had my girlfriend try it. And what happened was the same exact thing. I got like 160, then I'll get 280, then I'll get 200, then I get 20, 220. Then I get 280, then I get 160, and it was all over the place. Whereas other mice were kind of leveled out, you know, some were worse than others, but this one was all over the place. And then I moved it down to the four milliseconds and instantly for the both of us, all of that changed. So definitely in the settings, install the software, go in there, change the bouncing to four milliseconds, I'm begging you. As for gaming with this mouse, it's got those PTF feet on the bottom and they glide perfectly on all surfaces. And with my arm aim lately and the fingertip grip, oh my gosh, I have never been so accurate. I even had people in my Twitch chat saying, you have never been this accurate before. So this thing did make a huge difference in my game. And I hate to say like, oh, this is gonna be my main. This is gonna, because I feel like I get a new mouse every week, but this one is making a very, very strong case. It has not left my desk since I got it outside of like doing other reviews naturally. But every time I'm done with those reviews, guess what comes back on my desk? This one, because this is what I was waiting for. I wanted the Model O, but a little bit smaller and I got it. So track shots, flick shots, everything just feels amazing with this mouse. Sniping, whatever it is you wanna do, this mouse will do it and then some. It's a solid performer and for 50 to $60 from a great company, I think this should be on the top of everybody's list to try. If the Model O didn't work for you or something, you felt like the side buttons, you had issues with that mouse, definitely check out the Model O minus. I think it's worth a shot because it, it honestly, like the Model O, it was good but this is just, this just fits me perfectly. You know, this is, this is it. You know, this is what I wanted because Zowie isn't making the FK2 with a 3360 sensor and they're not making it lightweight. Well, here comes the hero that we all deserved glorious. All right, guys. So that is going to do it for my review of the Model O Minus. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. It has been your boy BT. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Peace. It's Brandon.
I got keyboard, I got tech, I review all that shit.